Okay, continuing now, well I say continuing, starting <laughs> our QSC Regalo project. The first thing I'm going to want you to do is to print out your PDF that contains all of your templates. Now I'm going to have this file, I'm going to have a file package ready for you uh, that will have hopefully some, um, some, some drawings that will help you along the way with this project. Uh, and also I'll have one PDF that uh, when you print it out, you'll be able to assemble all of your tiles together, each individual page, and you'll ultimately end up with what, what I have right here. I did a little bit sloppy work here. I'm off a little bit here, and I don't know if that's even going to show up on the camera. But I want to talk to you a little bit about this PDF. Again, it's eight pages, and... What I have done is I set the PDF up to where each page or each element uh, on the page is going to print 8 by 10 and a half. So when you open up your Adobe uh, Acrobat to view these files and you get ready to print, I always set my printer up for borderless printing. I set it up so that it uh, does no page scaling. So where you go, where you see your checkbox in your print dialog, um, set page scaling to none because we don't want to scale anything we want it to be accurate and then finally um, you can use this the feature that is uh, auto rotate and center and when you do that you should have a quarter inch boundary around each page that is not printing uh, and I went through careful uh, uh, considerations in order to pull this off so that you'd be able to print out accurate uh, templates uh, then I just take my straight edge, which in this case I just use an old scrap piece of aluminum, and I lay it up and I trim back the pages to where I'm trimming off a quarter inch all the way around, which just so happens that when I trim it, it butts up to the line segments that are there. I will tell you, this is an eight-page document. Page four, I think, is a blank page. Uh, that's you know you don't even need to print that one if you want to review it and not print it and not waste your paper that's perfectly fine also I put in scales in both the X and the Y direction and it just so happens that the one on the uh, on this direction prints completely on a page and what what I would recommend that you do is when you're ready to print out these templates print out just this one page you can go into the printer dialog and say print page whatever and I, I want to say that it's page three I think it's one two three four empty five six seven and eight but if you do that you'll be able to lay your uh, your ruler up or in my case get it here a, a tape measure and you should find I'm starting at one always burn an inch and it goes to seven so that tells me that is six inches exactly my page scaling is correct so if you'll print this one out first then you can be certain that you have your page scaling correct and then once you've done that with whatever settings that you've had to use again no page scaling and then auto rotate and center then you should have the exact templates of what you need and what I've done here is I've trimmed some of the pages and allow others to overlap but now now I have all of my templates that I can cut out and use uh, I would refer you back uh, to the QSC electric airplane, the first uh, Crashes Scratch Build Club we did, because in those video series I actually showed you. But basically all you're going to do is you're going to cut out your templates for each of these parts, and then you can use a little glue stick, uh, cold glue stick. I don't have one on my workbench right now. But then you can just, you know, run a... Yes, I do. You can get something like this. And you'll just... Just make a strip on the back side of your template after you've cut it out, and then it'll stick right to your balsa plank or plywood sheet or whatever that you're cutting from, and then you'll be able to work that without the template slipping and sliding on your wood, and you'll be able to cut it out. Um, I'll just a uh, quick note here. The only way you're going to be able to get the horizontal stabilizer is with the grain running this way, which is what we want. Same thing for your elevator. When we get over here to our vertical stab and our rudder, we want the same thing. We want grain direction running this way, as well for our 3 16 balsa pylon. 
your plywood. It kind of doesn't matter. It's however you want to lay it out. But you'll notice we've got these ply parts are the pylon mount that goes to our sail frame. These are the two plies that are going to go to our pylon mount to the fuselage. This is our 332nd balsa backed with 1 16th ply. We'll glue these together eventually and that will form our battery um, pedestal, if you will, a place to put our Velcro on to Velcro our battery. Um, 3 16 balsa for our pylon, 3 30 seconds balsa for our vertical and our rudder, 3 30 seconds balsa for our horizontal and our uh, elevator. 3 30 seconds balsa, this is going to get glued to the bottom of our pylon to give us the right spacing since we're using a 3 8 dowel like I have here that's going to be our fuselage, 3 8 square dowel, we need to be able to glue that all up. Um, and, and because this is 3 8 wide and we've got a 3 16 pylon, naturally we're going to have a variation. You know, one, one of them's not going to be as thick as the other, and that's where we use these 3 30 seconds balsa pieces. And it doesn't matter which grain direction these are, but they're going to make the difference up on the pylon. So when we get ready to glue this all together, it's, you know, nice and square and flush. So, uh, also, our landing gear, I've given you some rough templates. Um, I made these big. I'm showing wire to be an eighth inch thick, and naturally you don't have to use wire that thick. I just wanted it so that when you're bending your landing gear up, you would have the opportunity to use this as a easily referenced template to lay your wire down and bend it and work it to get your landing gear and your tail skid. And these are just to rough dimensions. You may want them a little bit lower. Uh, I don't think you'd want them taller. I'm about a seven and a half inch on the down leg, and that seems to work pretty good on mine. This is basically modeling after the slow stick landing gear that I use. Um, when you get to these 1 16th ply corners, you might want to cut these just a little oversized. This is what's going to join our spine and our two leading edges for our sail frame. And if you cut them just, a, I don't know, maybe an eighth inch oversized, then you can always sand those down after we glue everything up, so you might want to do that. Anyway, this is what you've got. Print out your templates, make sure they are to scale, um, like I have here, and you don't have any funky page scaling going on, and assemble them all up like this, and then you can start cutting out the parts uh, as noted here. Okay, as you can see here, I've got all my parts cut out, so basically I have a kit now. A um, couple of things we want to do. First of all, uh, let's talk about our servo tray. That's what that little H looking thing or I looking thing was. That's our servo tray. And what I've elected to do is to cut out the light ply one and then, or the, not the light ply, but the 1 16th ply piece. And then I just left my balsa as a square. And uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to glue these two together, get a laminate on them, and I'll actually take my pen and just make a little reference on each side. Because that balsa is so nice and light, and it's going to be real hard to cut that out without breaking it. So what I'll do is I'll lay glue where this is going to go onto it, like that, and then I'll cut it out after it's dry. So we're going to glue these two pieces together. Now if you've gone to the trouble of taking your 3 30 seconds balsa and cutting it out, that's great too. But we're going to laminate these two pieces together. Okay, so I'll do that off camera. You see I've got my vertical and my rudder cut, and uh, we'll set those aside. I've got my pylon cut, and we can set that aside. I've got my plywood pieces for where the pylon is going to mount to the uh, sail frame. So those are taken care of. I'll set those aside. Uh, got my battery uh, pedestal, 3 30 seconds balsa, 1 16th ply. We're going to laminate these together. and. Uh, one thing I want to bring up is what I like to use, what I've cut all of these parts out with, 
I just use a single edge razor. And the reason that I do this, first of all, your X-Acto blades are kind of expensive. And I buy the single edge razors. I don't have a price on this, but I think it's like seven or eight dollars at my true value. I get a hundred of them. And when I get one that goes dull, I pitch it out, and grab another one. I do want to tell you if you go that route, do yourself a favor and get yourself an old jar or you know like a mayonnaise jar or something with a lid and you can create a sharps container because you don't want to throw those razors straight in the trash can. Um, that's what I do around here and I have to be careful with those razors because I have young children. Um, a couple of things here we've got okay these are going to be laminated for our servo tray our battery pedestal we'll talk about these in a moment. Here's my elevator and my horizontal stabilizer. Now I want you to notice that on your templates, and I'm going to try to bring that into focus, you'll see that we've got a strong solid line that stands for the middle, that's what that's trying to represent, and then I've got a dashed line on each side of that. Well those dashed lines represent our 3 8 distance of our fuselage, you know, that we're going to do, our 3 8 dowel fuselage. Well, what I've done is I've transposed those onto my balsa. On one side, I've, take the, I've got the dash lines that I've made solid here. And on the other side, I have that strong center line. Now, the reason that we go this way is that center line is going to tell me, on the top side, where I can mount my vertical, nice and flush and straight, you know, 90 degrees. And then on the other side... I'll know how to glue on to my fuselage boom, giving me a uh, you know, nice centered you know, uh, horizontal stab, nice and, and centered and 90 degrees off of the, uh, the, the fuse stick. So anyway, that's what, uh, that's what I've done there with a the horizontal. And we can set those aside for now. Um, and elevator two. Now, one of the things that I want to show you that's important when you cut out your fuselage pylon uh, plates, you've got two out of sixteenth ply, and then you've got two out of balsa. Well, I want to show you how we get these. You'll notice that these are not exactly square. Eh, they may look like it at first glance, but they're not. And as we, if we've cut our pylon accurately, we notice that there's a little difference, right? Um, what was that, about an eighth of an inch or so? Well, what you want to do is you want to match up the, the, um, the width so that it's the same width as the pylon. You'll see I've already got a line on there and I'll show you. Uh, but once we understand which, which one is supposed to be the width and which one's supposed to be the height, then we can take that and line that up against our fuselage, as so, and then take your pen and make a mark. And that's how we get this. Now we can take our balsa pieces and go right up to that line and we can laminate those. I've cut these maybe just a little oversized, that's okay, uh, just because I don't mind going back and sanding them down with my sanding bar. But we're going to laminate those two pieces together. Again, we've got, oh, picked it up first time. That's wrong, if you can see that on camera. We've got an overhang of the pylon, but this is right. So again, we're going to come in here, we'll set it up to our 3 8 fuselage, and we'll make us a little line. And now we can take our balsa shim, is what that really is, and make sure that we're good there, and we can laminate these. So I'm going to glue all these things up and laminate them, and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, I've got my pieces here laminated. Uh, I used medium CA on this. Um, you could also have used easily, you know, your wood glue. Um, so we've got our 1 16th ply by 3 30 seconds, uh, also, you know, laminated together for our battery. We've got our two fuselage pylon supports, and we've got our little servo tray there. We're going to put that aside. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our 3 8 square dowel that's going to serve as our fuselage. I want you to cut that 16 inches long. 
believe that's what I've got. Yeah, 16 inches. And once you've got that cut back, I want you to measure from one end and measure back an inch and three quarter and make a mark. And that's what I've done there. Now we're going to, at this stage here, we're going to get our mast, our pylon, rather, you know, that serves as the mast, and then our two uh, pylon uh, braces that go to the fuselage. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm using the yellow glue again for this step. The reason I'm using wood glue, regular wood glue, is because this is going to give me a little bit of a working time. Um, and, it, you know, it should work real well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little glue. I can get it here on the camera. I'm going to put a little, oh, when you know it, this one's dry. I just finished up my other one. Oh, there we go. So, we're going to put a little, little bead there and a little here. I'm just going to take my finger and just kind of spread all that out. And I've already, I can tell, I've used too much. That's fine because I've got my paper towel here. And anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to stick that on the side of our fuse and line it up with our mark that's an inch and three quarter back. Okay. Now, I'm going to take the mast, uh, the pylon here. You'll notice that I've got it. This is going to be the nose of our aircraft. So this, I've actually got it uh, so that the angle of attack is, you know, away. The taller side of the mast goes to the front. And I'm just going to put a little glue on here, too. And I am using way too much. We're going to push this in here and make it go flush. And then again, we're going to take our other support. We're going to lay a little bit of glue. I'm going to try to use less this time. And we're going to tie this all in together, just like that. I'm going to mash it in there. I've got my paper towel here to take the squeeze out, and the excess off of there. And at this point, we're just going to put it in there, make sure we've got everything pushed down nice. And boy, if I made a mess. I usually don't make a mess like that. But I'm pushing down on this, making sure my pieces on the side are sandwiched together. I hope you can see that. We are at our mark. Now, if you have some clamps, now would be a good time to clamp this thing all up. And let it dry. And I've got a nice assortment here of clamps. If you don't have clamps, that's that's cool too. Because what you're going to do then is just put, you know, make sure everything is nice and square like you want it, and then weight it down with something heavy. Uh, one of the things that I use, I'm a I'm a ham radio operator, so batteries are things that I use in the field. And there we go, that looks pretty good. And so I've always got my my battery, my gel cell, or well, it's not a gel cell, that's a lead acid, or this one, which is my motorcycle battery. Those are good. I'm not riding my motorcycle right now. So <laughs> those are good for making certain that we've, uh, we've got plenty of pressure on there. But since I have these clamps, that's what I'm going to use. And I think you can see what we've got going. We're flush on the bottom. We're sandwiched in there on the top, nice and vertical. Anyway, um, we're going to let that sit now. We're going to let that dry up. And in about 20 minutes or so, it should be, 20, 30 minutes, it should be ready to proceed on to the next step. You do have time to, uh, you, you do have lots of time to wait or go on to other things when you're uh, building models where you have to let the glue dry. So we'll take a break here, and then, uh, while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to set up our next assembly.